is bringing just tremendous grief. Her family told me tonight that Asiya was the 17-year-old who was shot and killed at a pop-up party last night in Fairmount Park. Her mom sent these photos saying that she had just graduated high school and she was looking forward to college. Tonight, her dad spoke about his devastating loss right before Jeez. Father's Day. Ooh. I got to celebrate Father's Day without my daughter. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just like, like, it's a... I self. My man's name is I self. What about it? This is, this is real hurtful. It's just son man name. That's some like 5% of Muslim type <sighs> shit. I self King. like King. Yeah, me. Yeah, me, motherfucker. It's just it's just like like it's a this is this is real hurtful situation, man. Like I wouldn't wish this on nobody. You supposed to, you can't supposed to outlive you. You supposed to bury you. Mm. Like now, now she's just gone. Four other teens were also shot when police say about a hundred teenagers were partying from West Philly to Strawberry Mansion. NBC 10's Karen yes. spoke with neighbors who witnessed that shooting. It was the last day of school Friday across the city of Philadelphia, a day of celebration that turned deadly. It was so scary, and all I, all you could do was just pray. Neighbors tell us a hundred or so Yo, teenagers were. What the all you could do was fuck. What kind of hairstyle is that, man? Where is this at? It's Philly, man. Yo, yo, for Philly, she kind, she kind of cute, man. But look at the hairstyle, man. Come on, man, it's Philly, bro. You gotta give him a break, dude. Yo, that that's unforgivable, man. What the fuck is that, man? Here go, Mystic Philly, right here, man. What the fuck is that on her head, man? <laughs> It looks expensive, man. Expensive. Shit. What the hell is that? Man, Philly can't get right, man. This one would have been cute, man, if she would have. We we might have had our first Philly dime, man. But she went and fucked it up with this shit in her hair, man. This must be rough being a, a brother up there, man. God, no, man. What the fuck is this? What is, is that? You from Philly, you know, you tell us, motherfucker. Shit. I, yo, I don't know what it is. You from Philly, you know, you tell us, man. You gotta, 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 Hey, Savage Red Recovery, who are you, man? I don't, I don't, I'm trying to figure out who you are. Who the hell are you, man? Uh, I'm Savage Red Recovery. Wicked knows me. Does yeah, he? Yeah. yeah, what up, bro? Happy Father's Day, bro. Oh, you Thank know you. this guy? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man, he wiping the shit out of his hands, man. You get the fuck you on your hands, man. Yeah, I'm, uh, <clears throat> my family's hosting Father's Day tomorrow for, our family, so I'm I'm making food, so I'm washing my hands and stuff. Oh, you making some dishes? You making you making some um, unseasoned dishes, man? Okay, well, man, that's what's up. Well, I I know that you'd assume that based on my uh, pale face, but uh, I have mixed kids, so I'm a spicier white man. Oh, you down with the brown? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's what's up, man. Ain't nothing, man. My condolences. Say, nah. Salute to you, man. Um, man. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. Um. He. Yeah, man. Let's I see. think he's done. I think he's done. <laughs> you like this chick right here? Um. Would Would you? What about this chick, man? This This sister right here. Well, I'm currently. I'm married, so I'm not in the market, but I'll sleep with anything if I'm single. Okay. I am a retired pookie. Oh, okay. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, man. All right, man. Okay. It was so scary, and all I, all you could do was just pray. Neighbors tell us a hundred or so teenagers were hanging out here for a few hours last night, and it became this. A hundred or so teenagers for a few hours. Yeah, I mean in Philly. Yeah, I mean, come on, come on. You can't have a hundred or so teenagers hanging out in some place and nobody gets shot. So she was just out here being a teenager. This huge crowd that spilled out from the park into this gas station here. Police are calling this crime scene very, very large. And basically, you couldn't get your car out of the park. Like, I was trying to go to the Chinese store and I can't pick up my food. Currently, Philadelphia has a... Damn. Y'all fucking red bones, man. Y'all can't even do red bones right, man. What the fuck she the fuck is she look like Tony Danza, man? What the fuck is wrong with her hair, man? Again, man, Philly she a tan. Yo, that bitch straight look like Tony Danza, man. Or not can pick up my food. Currently, Philadelphia has a 10 p.m. curfew for people 14 to 18. Yeah, man, what happened, man? It was a curfew, man. All the white kids was in the house. All the Asian kids was in the house. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> white kids were like, oh, my God, it's 9.55. You got to hurry up and get home. <laughs> <laughs> right, they were running home. <laughs> yeah. Black kids throw a pop-up party. Fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah, that's why I moved out to the country. I don't want my kids around that. Yeah, man, you did the right thing. You you a glider, man. That's what gliders do, man. Gliders ain't fuck this shit. Get away from these centers, man. According to well, police, I grew up in, I, I'm from Cleveland. And all yeah, man. Get Cleveland, man. A mistake by the lake, man. 18. According to police, the shooting happened around 11. And all five yeah. victims are between 14 and 18. My kids was frightened. Like, it was just, it was just crazy. <sighs> Well, city data shows homicides are down about 38% compared to this time last year. Some worry as the weather gets warmer and kids are not in school, crime will surge again. Remember the pie, prevention, intervention, and enforcement. That's arts. That's Hey, man, so she got crime down 30. I mean, she got homicides down 38%. Hey, man, we got to give credit where credit is due, man. 38%? Do they, stop, it do they stop reporting it like most cities? You you can't stop reporting the murder. Now, other crimes you can do that with, but a body, you can't, like, you really can't. Do yeah, that. they can just declassify as something else. Not really, man. A body, a, a body is a body, man. The way, they, the way these sons kill, like, they shoot you in the middle of the street. Like, it ain't like they're like, this ain't like somebody getting poisoned or some shit over, a, like, somebody putting, like, a, a teaspoon of boric acid in their in their fucking cereal every morning for a month. This is like I've been shooting your ass down in front of the gas station. It's culture, well, that's education. I do know a lot of people that had and information about the clinic, uh, the Clintons, that they uh, decided to end their life with two bullets in the back of their own head. So you know, you never know. Yeah, man, uh, uh, Hillary and Clinton and. Them, they don't want no smoke with these people in Philly, man. Remember the pie, prevention, intervention, and hey, you gotta you gotta mute yourself too when you're not talking. You we can hear you over there making making that potato salad with raisins and shit, man. You don't hear that shit, man. But, yeah, so I don't I don't make potato salad. Uh, I'm actually uh getting burgers ready because I just put in my uh pork butt. Oh, well, yeah, man, just mute yourself when you ain't talking. That's arts, that's culture, that's education, that's workforce development, and make, and quality programming for the young people. At the Fathership Foundation in West Philly, they specialize in tackling these root issues. They offer free after-school and summer programs to keep kids busy and off the streets. Founder Dr. Wilson says a big part of the problem access to weapons. If you give kids guns without supervision, what do you think they're going to do? They're not responsible. What kind of stupid ass fucking like if like somebody just give like like the white man is like, here black kids, take these guns. Nah motherfucker, they getting them from the fucking dude in the hood that sell guns, man. 
They stealing them out of people's cars, man, when they go around at night breaking into cars. Try to act like it's somebody just giving, handing out everybody. I'm the gun fairy. Where are all the black children at? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> and only and only the black children. Yeah, exactly, man. Fuck is he talking about? It's like, God damn, man. You're supposed to be smart, man. You're from here, man. If you give kids guns without supervision, what do you think they're going to do? They're not responsible gun owners. They're kids. They're literally, five years ago, they were 10. In Strawberry Mansion, Karen Wall, NBC 10 News. I mean, there's some truth to that, but like, it's not linear like that, man. Um, you know, they killed the interrupters the in Chicago recently. I apparently they he killed was beloved. A violence in the road. Oh, violence yeah. Trouble. You know what yeah, that man. is? Yeah, man. You know what it is. In Fairmount Park turned deadly overnight when gunfire rang out. Five teenagers were shot. One of them has died from her injuries. Action News reporter Katie Castro spoke exclusively with the victim's family. I love it so much. No tears. It just, it just, it, it, it's hard not to notice it. I, it trust me. I know this woman feels bad. I know she does. They just never have any tears in their eyes. It's just, it's just, it's odd, man. It's, yeah, it's uncanny, it's right? And it's yeah, consistent. consistent. Exactly. It's not just one. It's like, it's like you can't not. You you're hoping like when you story begins, you're like, all right, sister, have some tears, man. Like that's your shit, man. Scare running and shit. It's like nothing, man. Pray to God that they catch them, whoever did this to her. The family of 17-year-old Isia Stanley is seeking justice as they come to terms with their sudden loss. I took my only daughter. I mean, I couldn't even kiss my daughter last. Like, I couldn't touch her. I couldn't touch her. Police say Stanley was shot in the chest just before 11 o'clock last night on the 2400 block of Greenland Drive. Authorities say four other teens were also injured in the shooting. Gunshots rang out as police tried to disperse several pop-up parties in Fairmount Park. Stanley's grandmother is fed up with the gun violence in the city. Gun violence out here in Philadelphia took my baby. Her mother says her daughter had just graduated high school with honors and was on her way to college to study business. I'm just so shocked that I lost my baby. She came a long way. She had a great life in front of her. Now the family. What? These people are strange, man. <laughs> Wicked, man. I mean, like, is it just me? No, nah, that's strange. Strange fruit. Yeah, they take it. They take it so well, man. Yeah, yeah. Salute. You know, I just wish they <laughs> took. I, I just wish they took less uh, meaningful shit. You know this well, but they can't help it. Like, all this Caitlyn Clark. They're probably more emotional about Caitlyn Clark than this shit. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. It was Caitlyn Clark's first answer where she didn't denounce her fans for being racist and shit. Yeah, he was right. <laughs> Pissed eating about that shit. Like, that's all. Bitch, you ain't, you ain't going to denounce the sec intersectionality or the LGBT. Yeah, that's true, man. It's like, wow, it's just bizarre, man. Um, bizarre. But, but, you, but, but you know what? I, as far as this goes, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take what Fabian explained to us. That makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, they, they're just, this group is just wired historically to, you know, producing volumes and losing volumes. You know what I mean? It seems like mm -hmm. anyway, right? Yeah, I mean, it is that way. Um, salute to Jeffrey, man. He, he says, happy Father's Day, sir. Salute to Mark Ishmael. He says, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the um, sun men out there and um, – yeah. Hopefully, we'll be seeing more Happy Father's Day next year to um, you gliders out there, man. <laughs> right, man. Yo, a special shout out Father's Day to all the single mothers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Man. You, know, you know it's coming. Yeah, man. And this is this a what is this? Is this a Philly dime? Is, is this a nice looking joint in Philly? No. 
in, in Philly shit ten for sure. Why you can't turn your shit off? Turn your shit off. <laughs> Oh my God, man! Come on, Mystic Philly, man! What the fuck, man? You, he's usually, he's usually on point. Yeah, he doing some Sun Man shit. He's reverting, man. Revert regression to the mean, man. In front of her. Now the family is pleading for the shooter to come forward. And I'm so hurt that this had to happen. But I hope whoever did it come to. Yo, man. To the light. This is bizarre. These people are bizarre, man. Like her daughter was just murdered in the street. We uh what a week after graduating at 17. I can't believe she actually thought that she's that the people that killed her is actually going to turn themselves in cuz they somehow have a conscience. She doesn't think that. She's just blabbering negro babble. You you, you 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 dating a sister? You don't know about Negro Babylon. <laughs> I know you heard it before. You're you dating a sister. <laughs> yeah, yo, yo, Savage is your is your girl? Is she woke? Would you consider her like a typical sister, or is she more conservative? No. So my uh my baby mom. Hey hey hey, we gonna need you to stop like making all that damn noise while you're talking, man. Please, man, just talk and then mute yourself. Stop what you're doing while you're talking, man. We can hear everything. Or just man. turn your camera off, too. My baby mom is black. My wife is white. Wait, well, you, you, you said you were a sister, though, right? My baby mom is a sister. My wife is white. Oh, oh so, you're, yeah. so you, so you, 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 um, you had a baby with a black woman, but when it was time to settle down, man, you went back. You know. I gotta say, you're you're not getting a lot of points in the saving the white race no. category here. No, my uh, my son's mom said that uh, marriage was too much of a commitment. <clears throat> so, do you have a kid with the white woman? Yeah, I have uh, four kids and one on the way. Okay, you redeemed then. Yeah, man, he's saving the white race, man. Single, That's right. Single or not single handed, shit. Single handedly saving the white race. So, so yeah, the, the, the the black the, the mulatto that you got right, you got a mulatto kid. How, how, do you treat the mulatto kid worse than you treat your white kids? No. So, uh, my two oldest, my stepson is half Jamaican, half white, and then my my old my birth son, he's uh, half white, half black. And then my daughter is uh, Europe. She's a uh, Bohemian and white. And then my next daughter's white. And then my next son's white. Somewhere, some Jew just splooged all over himself listening to that. Uh, why? Why is that fishing me? Because that's their goal. Oh, the mixing of the races. Yeah. That was that was a hell of a rundown. Yeah, man. Salute to um Mr. Toss Healing Mix coming through, man. Shout out to you, man. Um Austin Double Court the third says, Salute up. Thank you for your CC analysis and commentary. Appreciate you and the nation. Hope the family is feeling better. A little bit better. This, this damn cough in my throat is still kind of uh, scratchy, man. Um but uh, yeah, the, we got a cough, but all the other symptoms have kind of gone away, man. But but um, the cough is persistent. Um, she had a great life in front of her. Now the family is pleading for the shooter to come forward. And I'm so hurt that this had to happen. But I hope whoever did it come to the light. Police say the other victims, two 15-year-old boys, a 14-year-old boy, and an 18-year-old woman were taken to local hospitals in stable condition. As for Stanley's family, instead of planning for her future, they are now planning her funeral. Yeah, I was just with her. I was hugging her yesterday at 6.30. Gave me a hug, ran to my car. Mom, I love you. She just gave me kisses and kisses and kisses on my cheek. I would never get no more of those. There have been no arrests at this time. If you have any information, Philadelphia police could certainly use your help. Reporting in Fairmount Park, Katie Catro, Channel 6, Action News.
It was Halloween night two years ago when a 47-year-old man was gunned down in southwest Philadelphia. His mother is speaking out and asking for your help to track down his killer. Here's Rick Williams with tonight's Crime Fighters report. Joyce Ann Mayer says her son, Matthew Thomas, was into art and cooking. Nobody comes in the kitchen when he's cooking because he loves to cook and everything is just immaculate. The 40 wow, that's kind of like you, uh, <laughs> Savage, man. You white people love to cook, man. Um, seven year old was planning on cooking dinner for his mother on Monday, October 31st, 2022. When he didn't return from work, she became concerned. It's like 6.30, 7 o'clock. Okay. It's getting close to 8. It's getting close to 9. So I text Matthew. I'm really worried. Just after 10, she received the call from police that she had feared. Your son Matthew was killed this afternoon. He was shot to death. At 5.35 wow. p.m., police were called to a home along the 2500 block of Carroll Street in southwest Philadelphia where Thomas was doing work clearing out a house. They found him lying next to a silver Dodge pickup truck. He was pronounced dead at the scene. He was just kind and generous and sympathetic and empathetic with everyone he met. The city of Philadelphia is offering up to $20,000 in reward money for information that leads to the arrest and conviction of the person responsible. All you have to do is call the Citizens Crime Commission at 215. Five, four, six tips. Oh, man. Um, you know, a part of me feels guilty for assuming it's a brother, a son, man. You know? Yeah. So, do you guys remember in uh, Memphis uh, back in February, there was like a white glider DJ who got his head yeah. cut off, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody yeah, was thinking, yeah. oh, there's no way that could be a son, man. Well, it was a son, man. And uh, oh, wow. his story was fucking tragic, right? Because his mom was like, you know, he went into a decline, you know, health wise and never recovered three years ago when he was shot, you know, outside his club, which was it turned yeah, out just yeah. a bunch of sons that botched a robbery on him. Mm. So there was an update on that. There was a recent update. Or I just thought about it when I saw this guy and I looked oh. him up and yeah, and there was a there recent was some man who cut his head off. Wow. Man, it's it's amazing that the, the rate that son man killed gliders, though. And that nobody, you know, it's just widely ignored, you know? Yeah, um, uh, I, it's completely ignored. And 100% nearing, nearing 100% of some men would be like, only gliders do that, cutting their Yeah, because it's so. ignored. And and they get all their news from, from like, pop culture and, like, from, 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 they get all their news from mainstream media, for the most part, and, and pro-blackity blacks. So, yeah, like, a lot of some men aren't aware like of how much killing of white people we do. Well, even if they were, it wouldn't change their opinion. Oh, not, not at all. It, it would be a source of pride too if they knew. He knew. Some of the points yeah, there's a big is, disdain for white people in the black community to, from a recent survey. Yo, you gotta uh, be careful, man, not to talk during the video, man. Um, uh, um, savage, man. This is breaking news. Some of the points during this. Yeah, man. The way you follow directions, man, I'd hate to taste some of your food, man. <laughs> Shit. This is breaking news. Some of the points during this. I didn't think that we were ever going to have an end, but it was going to be a cold case. So I would like to applaud them. Well, some emotional words from the mother of Rachel Morin after police have arrested a suspect in connection to the murder of her daughter. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kelsey Krishner. More in the mother of five was okay. Who killed? Who killed this glider, man? Who killed this glider queen? Man? Does she look like a? Oh, the baby's white, so I don't know. Does it look like it could be a? Do it look like it could be a? She could be a mud shark. Who can tell? Well, you can tell, man. Sometimes I don't know. This one looks like a. She looks like a. She, she could be a tiger white. shark. We don't know. Oh, this is Baltimore. I'm Kelsey Chris. Yeah, this is this is well, this is Maryland. So this is the the area around Baltimore. So could be a could be a white 
Commissioner Moore and the mother of five was murdered along a popular hiking train in Harford County Trail, excuse me, in Harford County last year. The sheriff made that announcement today in a news conference. Several new details were released about the case. Could Our Harford out. County community reporter Jessica Albert is in is live in Bel Air tonight with the very latest on the arrest. Jessica. Hey, Kelsey, after a 10 month long investigation, the Harford County Sheriff's Office has announced that 23 year old Victor Martinez Hernandez was taken into custody last night in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Damn, wicked. Who got a bitch? Yeah, but the Oklahoma, thing about it is, sheriff. this is fake news. You know, he's not even, he's not even a Mexican on Brito. I bet. Ooh. Ooh. No, no, we'll take it. That we'll a take new it. lead came in a few weeks ago that cracked this case open and led to the arrest of this man in a case that has haunted the Harford County community for 10 months now. After a long investigation, Rachel's murder is no longer a free man. The Harford County Sheriff says Rachel Warren's killer has finally been caught. <laughs> Authorities in Tulsa, Oklahoma, took 23-year-old Victor Martinez Hernandez into custody late Friday night. He's been charged for killing and raping Morin on the Mon Pod Trail in Bel Air in August of last year. The sheriff says a lead involving genetic genealogy led them to their suspect. On May 20th, on what should have been Rachel's 38th birthday, and then a poetic coincidence, or perhaps in Rachel's own divine assistance, our investigators uncovered a lead that led us to this day. According to investigators, Martinez Hernandez is a citizen of El Salvador. They say he killed. Oh, you was right, Wicked. Wow. Nailed it, man. Goddamn Salvadorian. Wow. A woman there in January of 2023 then illegally fled to the United States a month later. Then, in March of 2023, investigators say he assaulted a nine-year-old girl and her mother at a home in Los Angeles. Wow. Victor Hernandez did not Yikes. come here to make a better life for himself or for his family. He came here to escape the crime he committed in El Salvador. He came here and murdered Rachel and God willing, no one else. The sheriff says Martinez Hernandez has ties to gangs. Investigators are checking to see if he's connected to any other crimes. Rachel's emotional mother spoke at a news conference held Saturday afternoon about the arrest. She credits law enforcement for finally catching the suspect. At what Man, that's a swarthy, um, a swarthy uh, Mayan. Where you at, man? Where you at, man? God damn conference held Saturday afternoon about the arrest. She credits law enforcement for finally catching. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, I was going to say that. I right, salute to the, to, to the pigs, right? I mean, think about that. You know? Yeah. Shout there's out no, to them, man. There's no way that this is the only person this guy killed. It's like a 0% chance or hurt, you know? And uh, yeah, th man. this is also the kind of guy that people, libs, are complaining about getting, you know, La Solucion Final in fucking El Salvador. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, what's his name? Um, Bukele? Naya Bukele, yeah. yeah they, um, you should have joined the fucking list of the, the dead down there. His, homie, his homies. Yeah, man. He's, a, he's on the, the Juice Crew hit list. He'll be gone. Oh, yeah. Bukele? Oh, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. No, they, they, they definitely... Not, don't like him, man, because that type of stuff can spread. They they know just like how their bullshit spreads. They know that this shit that he's doing can spread, so they want to snuff that shit out. Right at the exactly. Room. Yeah. Wow. Let's see. I'm a suspect. At one point, um, when things seemed like really bleak and. Hopeless. The lead detective said to me, he said, patience will win in the end. And we're learning new details about Martinez Hernandez's arrest from Tulsa police. We're told he was arrested at a bar last night and that when he was initially arrested, police say that he tried to lie to them about who he was and the crimes that he's accused of. Harford County deputies are on their way to Tulsa right now to try to get went Martinez to Tulsa? Hernandez back here to Maryland. Okay. He went to, to the home of uh, Juneteenth or whatever the fuck. Wow. Like Mecca. 
Yeah, man. He went to Black Wall Street. He probably was going shopping, man. He's like, man, let me go. Might have needed a haircut. That that's ways away, man. From... <laughs> Yeah, he, need, he needed to get um, he needed to get um, uh, and a payday advance. <laughs> yo, shit, man. yo, but that's ways away, man. That how dangerous, man. What 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 the Biden admin is doing is is a sin. Oh man, god damn, man. Um. To a murder investigation outside of a restaurant on Milwaukee's north side. The victim's family saying her mother found a gun stashed in the bushes before police arrived. This is video they shared with TMJ. Before news showing a group leading the officers to the weapon hours after the woman was shot and killed in the parking lot at the McDonald's on Titonia and Villard. Those who knew the victim best. Our Mike Beermeister, her death is a loss for the entire city. Yo, what the fuck is going on here, man? To a murder investigation outside of a restaurant on Milwaukee's north side. The victim's family saying her mother found a gun stashed in the bushes before police arrived. This is video they shared with TMJ4 News showing a group leading officers to the weapon hours after the woman was shot and killed in the parking lot at the McDonald's on Titonia and Villard. Those who knew the victim best tell our Mike Beermeister her death is a loss for the entire city. Her death is a loss for the entire city. Yikes. Bold claim. Uh, I'm telling you, man. man. how so? I'm curious to know how so. I mean, God damn. I mean, I don't mean to be a dick, but I'm going to see some evidence. <laughs> Yeah, man. The entire city, though. Yeah, Yo, he man. fixed it. Yo, Philly fixed his mic. Oh, you fixed it, man. You, you, you. What you went and asked the white, the white friend over there with you? Yo, yeah, you funny. You funny. <laughs> no, it was uh, um. No, you know what? Well, I got a studio set up here, so my mic wasn't. My mic wasn't working, so it's fixed now. Okay. So I'm good. Do a microphone check. <laughs> microphone check. 23 years cannot be summed up in 60 seconds, but she wants people to know who her sister was, a mentor, an advocate, Dash, and I'm someone who up. always showed up no matter what. A mentor and an advocate. Wow. She definitely did some time. I was gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. That's like literally like part of like the job. <laughs> to to be a mentor and to stand, you gotta have a rap. Yeah. Have you been oh. to jail? Uh, no, actually, um, the charges were dropped. Oh, sorry, we can't. <laughs> we can't hire. You. I'm not qualified. Sorry. Qualified. Underqualified. But I but I I I, I killed somebody. Yeah, but they they dropped the charges. Yeah, but you. Yeah, right. <laughs> If you would have beat the body, that would have been something else, but you know, yeah, yeah. you'd have took him to court, yeah, that would, have been, yeah, but you know, they dropped the charges. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta go through them, you gotta go behind the walls, man. So you could relate, so you could relate to the, you know, the youth, the kids, yeah, the babies. <laughs> what a strange community, man. Um, just. And those of you who say, why do we cover black crime? Let me tell you this. First of all, we don't. We just cover all crime. The black stories are more exciting, so it makes your brain think that we're only covering. Now, that one white guy last night that was, like, confessing and shit, the one wild. who kidnapped the girl... He he was he had black energy, black crime energy, but um most black crimes are like this, and white crimes are very boring. To a murder yeah, investigation yeah. outside of a restaurant on Milwaukee's north side, the victim's family saying her mother found a gun stashed in the bushes before police arrived. This is video they shared with TMJ4 News, showing a group leading officers to the weapon 
hours after the woman was shot and killed in the parking lot at the McDonald's on Titonia and Villard. Those who knew the victim best tell our Mike Biermeister her death is a loss for the entire city. 23 years cannot be summed up in 60 seconds, but she wants people to know who her sister was, a mentor, an advocate, and someone who always showed up no matter what. Grieving and heartbroken, friends and family of Roz Rogers stand just feet away from where the 23-year-old was shot and killed Thursday morning. Aaliyah tells me her sister had a big smile and cared about everyone. She gave a kid the shoes off our feet the shirt off our back. And I'm not lying, I can't make this up. <laughs> I watch. You got gold teeth too? God damn. Those sisters, these are the females out here. <laughs> Do they got a um a gold teeth um place on Black Wall Street? <laughs> okay, get this one down for Dr. Goodall. This is interesting behavior. I and I can't make this up. <laughs> I watched her do it. I was there for that. Roz not only mentored her sister, she also helped at-risk kids and adults through the organization Break... Yo, what the fuck is going on, man? <laughs> Yo, they're going to talk about her rap. I'm sending you right now. It's going to come on. Yeah, okay. her put down the guns rap or some shit. Yeah, she got an album. She definitely got an album. Making Barriers Mentoring. What did Roz mean to your organization? Roz was everything, man. You know, she she was great with the children. She was great with the youth. She just had a heart for the people. A heart for people and a passion for justice. She was more than just an activist. She was a humanitarian. Oh. <laughs> That's actually pretty uh, insightful, man. Usually they say stupid shit, right? Like they show keep a room or, you know? Smooth to her, man. But so everything they're saying is interesting. Salute to her, man. Salute to her, man. Um, she did was, all she, that just to get fucking shot by the ops outside of McDonald's. Not even. Wow. And in her humanitarianism, she wanted freedom and justice and equal rights for everyone. And she poured her heart and soul into everything she did when it came to the people. She was going to do a lot of great things in the community. Now Roz's family will look for justice for her. Justice for Whoever did it hurt the city. They didn't hurt just one person. She didn't have just a family. She had a community behind her. They cared about her deeply. Roz's cousin, Sedan Smith, tells me that she also had a passion for dogs and was a licensed breeder. She wanted to help provide safe uh, homes for them and teach kids how to properly take care of the dogs. Shannon. Thank you, Mike. Uh, any like what happened to her though? What happened to her? All right, whatever. Let's see this. Like, yeah, I don't mention it, but it actually happened first. Yeah. Tonight, eight eleven. We're going to stay on top of that breaking news out of Gwinnett County, where just hours ago, a jury found a former police officer guilty for the murder of a sixteen-year-old girl. Twenty-three-year-old Miles Bryant will spend the rest of his life behind bars now convicted of malice murder and the death of 16-year-old Susanna Morales. This is a case we've been following since the teenager vanished yeah. in July of 2022. Her remains were found months later in Decula. 11 Alive's Cody Alcorn is live tonight from outside the Gwinnett County Courthouse. So, Cody, is this verdict bringing some relief to the Morales family? Fisherman's in the back. Well, Ron, in some ways, yes, but trials are tough. Her family had to sit inside the courtroom behind me and listen to some gruesome details about her final moments. And at the same time, sitting just feet behind a man at once in his life took an oath of office to protect his community. Tonight, convicted of killing an innocent young girl. We, the jury, found the defendant guilty. It took just a little over five hours of verdict. Susanna Morales' family has been waiting nearly two years to hear. Susanna's sister, Jasmine Perez. All oh, we wanted was... <laughs> it was justice for what happened to her. Knowing that no matter how many years Bryant serves... Nothing will ever bring her back <laughs> to this day. I still hope that I'll see her again. While they finally got justice, their lives will never be the same. 
A mother experiencing the worst heartbreak any parent can endure. There's not a night that I don't go to bed thinking about her because I miss her so much. A mother who never gave up fighting for her daughter. <laughs> Only after we found her, I promised her that we were going to have justice. A promise she asked the judge to help her keep. Judge, and I just want him to receive every day that he can because she was a good girl, a happy girl, and she didn't uh, deserve that. The judge hinting before sentencing. This mother's quest for justice has finally paid off. I just hope that after today, you and your family can find some peace that is what I wish for you. Hopefully, you will receive some peace now. You can tell the judge, even heartbroken by all of this, just moments after saying that she sentenced Bryant to life without the possibility of parole. Now, Bryant did address the courtroom very briefly, saying he's sorry, and his defense attorneys tell us they do plan to appeal and ask for a new trial. You know, Cody, I, I just can't imagine. Of course. They go, then after that, he go appeal again. <laughs> yo, yo, sorry. I, stupid system. Sorry I did that shit, but appeal. Yeah but, but, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I gotta, you know, parlay. I gotta do what I gotta do, you know. And then what? Twenty years from now, when the witnesses <laughs> yeah. are dead, or they, or they're tired of going to court for the thousandth time, um, right. some fucking juice crew lawyer comes along and says, "Hey, man, he's wrongfully convicted." Man. Right, the, you'll the, be the, on the Joe Rogan experience and courtside yeah. at the Lakers. <laughs> right. Yo, the judge before you kill day, somebody else. The the judge one day freshman high school, he fucking wore blackface. So yeah, everybody man. gotta go, everybody gotta get out now. Yeah, man. It's, it's, it's just it's insane, man. In a crime alert tonight, a Memphis filmmaker fighting for his health becomes a burglary victim. George Tillman says he was battling a severe case of pneumonia. And to make matters worse, police tell us his brother is now accused of stealing his most valuable items, movie scripts, while he was in the hospital. WRG's Alan Self is live tonight after speaking with Tillman. And Alan, this is pretty disturbing. What's he telling you tonight? Shay, after a three-week hospital stay, George Tillman says he returned home to find his belongings out on the street. He says instead of checking on his health, his own brother used that time to destroy his house. He told me you're sick and you're in the hospital, and I said, okay. Well, that's what he was saying, man. But that just gave him an excuse to go in there and ramble. And, and, and then he steal. whatever he won. Yeah, and then goes by crack with him. Kevin Tillman is facing <laughs> aggravated burglary charges. Oh, He's accused of stealing $30,000 in furniture wow. and $25,000 like in films and jewelry from his... Yo, He's wow. in a whole wow. other dimension in this photo. <laughs> he looks fresh out the boat. Yo, I, I guess net picking again. Their Agnation goes net picking again. Yeah, thanks, I, for only selecting the black stories. Yeah, it's pretty sad how you do that to your own community. <laughs> Right. I know, man. I ain't shit, man. But look at this, man. This, I don't know what's more strange, man, is to is that this is a film director or that this is like to do this. Story. They look related, actually. I wonder if they're related. Oh, this is brother. This is brother. Yeah, this oh, is brother. shit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> my brother, my like, brother. This is the black Steven Spielberg. Right? So, so, so when he called him brother, he actually meant like actual. Yeah, this is this is goddamn goddamn God, shit, man. I'd love to see one of his movies, man. Time to destroy his house. Tell me you're sick and you're in the hospital, and I say okay. Martin Luther Scorsese. <laughs> well, that's what he was saying, yeah. man. But. That just gave him an excuse to go in there and ramble. And, and, and then he, whatever he won. Yeah, and then goes by crack with him. Kevin Tillman is facing aggravated burglary charges. He's accused of stealing $30,000 in furniture and $25,000 in films and jewelry from his brother's home. George said while he was in the hospital for pneumonia, Kevin lied to neighbors, telling them he was helping him recover by removing the items he called contaminated from the house. 
Yeah, see, I thought he'd do something good for you because he. Yeah, that's so what he had everybody fool, thinking yeah. that he was doing something. Man, when I got here and saw that house, I couldn't believe. I said, this ain't cleaning up, man. This is rambling. You rambled through my things and you uh, destroyed my things. George, who is an award-winning filmmaker and screenwriter, said after spending weeks in the hospital, he returned home to find his belongings scattered everywhere, his bed on the street, and his house in shambles. He also said he saw his brother wearing his shoes. And I was trying to bring my mattress back in the house, and he was coming up the street. And I looked down at his feet, and he had my brand new white Nike tennis shoes on. And I said, no, man, we can't do that. You got to pull off my, my clothes and my shoes, man. He says a neighbor told him Kevin had been seen multiple times taking things out of the house, prompting George to call the police. Though his shoes and jewelry were stolen, the filmmaker is focused on recovering his most precious assets, his films and scripts. Yeah, you, can't, you can't put a price on those scripts. One of my films, you can't put a price on it. It's, it's, it ain't no telling how much money it's, it's valued at. Hmm. I'm guessing nobody ever. Did. Kevin is currently in custody. Yeah, man, he's waiting for that movie to get green lit. <laughs> yeah, can you can you put a price on something that no one buys? Does it still have a price if it's never sold? Yeah. I... Let's let's get philosophical with this. Delusions of grandeur, man. Yes, oh. man. I would have whipped his ass as he was coming down the street. Yeah, man. Um, let's see what else. Uh, is going tell on. us about the underground movie script scene on in the in the hood. Yeah, man. Hey, listen, man. I don't know nothing about you know all of that, but I do know that Sun Man. When he when he had them shits, he probably wasn't doing nothing with them. But when his brother stole them, he probably was like, "That's when he valued them." Because we don't we don't treasure nothing till it's gone, man. That's probably what happened there. I don't think that some people would have come up with movies in Africa. You know, hey, Oct, did you nah, see Chaotic man. Debate Mills? Who, who's Mills? Israel Mills. Who's Israel Mills? You passed this channel a minute ago when you were scrolling down. Where? More. Right there. This is Israel well, Mills? That's oh. Israel Mills. Chaotic battle. I uh, was battling it out with him on, on um, Mills' channel. <clears throat> hey, Otter right. has been wild in the past couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's, what is, who's Mills? What is he doing? He part of the black YouTube. Yeah, the great sun word so, debacle. So, so is he one of those like we were kings kind of guys and the gliders took everything or what is he saying? Kinda, yeah. He he oh, cool okay. though. He he ain't on it like heavy. He he talks about other stuff. I, well, I mean if he's but, complying that but, shit, I don't know how cool he could be, bro. But there's a white chick on tour around nigga YouTube using the N word and everybody's making videos yeah. about it. She yeah, turns it over on this. <laughs> she's the second time a white woman single handedly just like flip nigga YouTube on the side. I'm <laughs> talking about what's that other girl? What's her name? Lee? I think. I don't even know. I just love that it. English girl who, um, the girl from England who, um, uh, who's the Manosphere girl. What's her name? Oh, uh, damn, Jessica X. No, she oh. white. Uh, pearly, pearly thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That for, was, for, oh, was but why is she? Why is she? Why is she using the the song word? Like, is it to a purpose or just to upset the brother? Upset the kings? I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like ladder privilege, shit, bro. I hate gliders because you know. I just like it when everybody gets gaslit and goes crazy. Yeah, yeah, a lot of shit. See, you know, you know, some some people they worry about the shit that matters, you know. <laughs> yeah, fuck the fuck the lights and the sewers and all that. What about this one <laughs> random TikTok? <laughs> White girl, the cops gotta... just shot a biker in Philly. They shot oh, a, like a, gl a glider biker. I don't know. I ain't read the story. I was watching y'all. Great man. <laughs> 
the in the head? Shot was it they in the head? The old man the other day. I, I wonder who shot him though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I'm glad, man. Let's let's see what is going on here, man. Participants um, who want their name a cross section of Memphians made their presence felt today in Orange Mound, urging for nonviolence. Thanks for joining us at six. I'm Kevin McNamara. Orange yes. Mound is one of the sunniest places in Memphis. The, so it's the like, trenches. It's like, uh, yeah, you're you're urging nonviolence in a place where like they wouldn't even like not shoot somebody like while your event is going on. Like there was a shooting in Orange Mound while this was happening and then let alone like stop it like forever all like all together. The annual walk against gun violence happened nearly two months after a mass shooting in Orange Mound Park that killed two people and injured seven others. Our Desmond Nugent spoke with organizers on their ideas to stop the violence following a 2023, which set a new record high for homicides in Memphis. And he's here now. Desmond. Kevin, these are the types of events that show unity among participants who want their neighborhoods safer and are thriving and thriving. But those participants also acknowledge public safety remains the community's top priority. This morning, dozens of organizations walked across Orange Mound, unified against gun violence in the ninth annual event. The more than a mile walk, which began and ended at Melrose High School, is intended to send a message to community members and lawmakers about the impact of gun violence in Orange Mound and across the city. However, Memphis Mayor Paul Young and Interim Police Chief C.J. Davis are encouraging the public to be part of the solution to reduce crime. That includes reporting incidents and knowing what their family members are up to before it gets too late. Accountability is for us as a city, for law enforcement, accountability for the criminal justice system, accountability for parents, uh, making sure that their young people are doing the right thing, accountability for adults that are making bad choices. Memphis PD is working overtime. My officers are out there. They're getting bad guys off the street. I'm not talking about misdemeanors. I'm talking about people who are committing felons, felonies. At 10, here the pleas for solutions from one mother who lost both of her sons to gun violence and her cries to the community to step up and increase the peace. Kevin. Mm. Oh, uh, did you see that Akron, uh, Akron, Ohio has canceled all Juneteenth f- uh, activities and events? No way. Oh, no. Are you serious? Look it up. Just do Akron, mm. June, Akron, fucking Akron, Akron. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay, here we go. Wow. Well, that's a long-ass press conference. Let me see oh, going. yeah, you can just get the okay, highlights of it. You. Late Friday evening, Mayor Shamus Malik held a press Smash. conference to discuss why the city is now canceling large gatherings on public property after the cancellation of Friday's concert at Lock 3 Park. I'm Remy Murray in Akron to discuss what other events are now called off. I'm not going to pick and choose and say some folks can gather and some folks cannot. And so we decided to close the events that are going on this weekend. Early Friday afternoon, Malik says eight city council members sent him a letter to express grave concerns regarding this weekend's Juneteenth celebrations as a result of the death. So this is Juneteenth? I thought next week was Juneteenth. No, nah, this week. So you know what that means. Well. Deadly street party on June 2nd. The letter even addressed a separate incident that happened on Friday. Where the- so we get Monday off, right? So no show Monday. <laughs> yeah, Monday off I Tuesday. think so, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. No show Monday, man. I'm taking. I'm going to go off. do my uh, traditional glider celebrations of, of the team. Yeah, man. So uh, the, those the, council members. Yeah, I think they're about to say it, but. There was a shooting or some shit. Violence broke out at the funeral of the guy killed in that fucking mass shooting. Damn. That happened on Friday, where those council members say violence broke out at the funeral of the young man killed during that shooting. Malik makes it clear there isn't any... We the only ones where, like, that happens. Like, I'm still waiting on that story, man. There's no... There's nobody else attacking people and killing people at funerals and shit. <laughs> it just doesn't fucking like, happen. I mean, so it's I literally like a, it. it's like a mad TV skit. Yeah, because it, it's like the, the the just the lack of respect that act is so vile because you're like shooting up a funeral, like 
You know what I'm saying? Like that's become normal. But if you just if it wasn't like black people, just think about like shooting up a funeral, just seeing a group of people gathering for a funeral and just shooting into that crowd. And then just literally like going about your business. You remember the one with the two funeral companies beefing with each other? Yeah. And they killed that was in DC area, right? Oh Wasn't that in like something like that? Yeah. Yeah, they killed yeah, the one funeral homeowner killed the funeral homeowner for another funeral home and That's somebody's yeah. fucking funeral. I gotta see if I can find that. Incredible threat to this weekend's Juneteenth festivities or any other events, but he says these concerns are serious. You know, I have to weigh all the different things. When I have more than half of Akron City Council uh, saying that these events are, are irresponsible, I have to weigh that too. And so this is where we landed on this one. Earlier this week, I just reported how former city councilwoman Tara Mosley Weems planned to increase police presence at the fifth annual Ward 5 Juneteenth Festival. Now her event is one of many that can no longer happen after the mayor's latest announcement. We did all the necessary things that were asked of us um, to make sure that our parks that were secure and safe. And uh, just to have the... Um, did you disinvite some people? Yeah, <laughs> you invite <dude>. some people. <laughs> There's no way you could say you've done everything you could to 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 inhibit everything crime. Good man. would be not to hold this event. Exactly, man. Or just invite a bunch of white people. That can no longer happen. After the mayor's latest announcement, we did all the necessary things that were asked of us um, to make sure that our parks were. Secure. Look at this, though. Like, like so. So, look at her. She would never wear that like this. <laughs> <She's wearing> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your, what do your... this got to do with slaves in Texas, man? Hey, like, yo, you know how man. you got church clothes? I... Yeah. So exactly. niggas also have like a, a, a just in case some African shit break out <laughs> outfit. <laughs> but, 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 what's African about some slaves in Texas. Some I thought she was supposed to be. She, she should be in a samurai outfit oh, yeah. if she wants to be accurate <laughs> to history. Right. Yeah, uh, we the first old, samurai. An Ome, an Ome outfit. A, a Native Yo, American. I, may, maybe the maybe the measures they took out was making it forty and up. You know, you got to be forty and yeah, up. Yeah, I time. mean, even then, you still for Juneteenth because of the excitement and the pride welling up in everybody's. Hey, I ah, watch this. You from out this way? You know where Wildwood is, right? Wildwood. That's um. Is that like um Philadelphia area? No, that's it's, it's Jersey. It's like the boardwalk in Atlantic City, but just a okay. City. Okay. So they got they banned book backpacks at night over there. <laughs> No way, backpacks. Yeah, niggas tore that joint up on the holiday. Jesus, wow, man. no backpacks. So if you have a backpack at night as the sun, man, you can be stopped and searched, right? Yeah. Oh stopped damn, that's a good idea. Yo, we yeah, we are man. changing America, like literally. Yeah, we are. We we We're are taking this shit back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With the driving force, man, um, behind all this change, man. Announcement. We did all the necessary things that were asked of us um, to make sure that our parks were secure and safe. And uh, just to have the rug pulled from underneath us um, in the 11th hour because of two council members, it, it's very disheartening. Our plan was for these to proceed. Uh, when, when you receive a letter like what we received, um, it's hard to move forward. The mayor says Akron can expect an official indoor Juneteenth celebration on Wednesday at John S. Knight Center, where he's asking all organizers and vendors to join. But mostly Weems and other event planners at Friday's press conference say this isn't enough, so they hope to reschedule their events when allowed. What about all the food they bought? What about the, the clothing they put together so they could sell it? Who's going to make them whole? The mayor recognizes there are more events planned this summer, so he says he's going to work to make sure this is not the new normal. He also makes it clear he's not encouraging people to cancel private gatherings at their homes, but to be safe and responsible.
As long as I am mayor, we are going to be laser focused on safety. During the press conference, mm. the mayor says he doesn't plan to do a ban on public events or large gatherings, just events happening this weekend only. He also says he does not plan to institute a curfew. In Akron, Remy Murray, News 5. Well, wouldn't Ooh. do shit anyway, so. It's, it's it just funny the shit they got to do, you know, for like a sun event. Can you imagine if the Amish had some kind of holiday? And them taking these Ooh. kind of measures, they wouldn't. Yeah, I, uh, it's we're the only ones, man. We're special, man. Um, but canceling Juneteenth event events uh, nationwide would be a good, you know, I would say that'd be a good measure at this point. Yeah, I mean, I'm down for it, man. Family and friends gathered today outside the East Cleveland home where a missing woman's remains were found earlier this month. They were black and gold and released balloons to remember and honor Michelle Arnold. The 23-year-old had been missing since October of last year. We followed Ooh. through with Michelle's family for months as they searched for her and clues about her disappearance. Her sister, Ebony, says she was a loving and understanding person. Just all around good kid. Like this is just devastating. It's just it's just unfortunate. It's just she, you know, got around the wrong people and it, it's just sad. Michelle's sister believes the people involved in her death will be found and justice will be served. Mm. What makes her believe that? She just believes it. Um evidence suggests see. otherwise. Yeah, man. Apparently, she knows him. Aqua yeah, that's probably what it is. Aquatica, man. Aquatica Orlando. This is my first time ever being at Aquatica. So I really, I haven't watched any videos or anything. I'm coming in completely blind. I'm so excited. It's such a refreshing feeling to come into a fresh theme park because I go to them all the time and I just haven't been to this one. Northwood, we're going Northwood. Wow, like I mean, so people just having fun down at these type of places, man. Just it looks wholesome. I know, man. This is this is I wonder what could cause all that fun to come to a stop. <laughs> I know, man. It's because it looks crazy, like a lot man. of fun. I know another type yeah. of fun. <laughs> this does look, I mean, like I mean <laughs> Hey everybody, it is me, Vincent. It is a beautiful day to be at a water park, a summer in Orlando, and specifically, I am at SeaWorld's Aquatica. I'm trying to visit as many of the big water parks as I can here in Orlando, the big ones that you're going to want to visit, and this one here is definitely one of them. I think SeaWorld's Aquatica is probably one of the most, if not the most, popular water park for your Orlando visit. It's a really big park. It's a very pretty park. It's got a lot of good stuff going on here. There's going to be a couple of firsts for me today here at Aquatica. This is going to be the first time I'm going to get to experience their newest slide, Tassie's Underwater Twist. Ooh, he looked like he had a good time there, too. That's crazy, man. Um, somebody, got, somebody got to mute themselves, man. Somebody got a lot going on. Who was that? That's Mystic Philly, man. You still salute, support the channel. Hit the PayPal Cash App Super Chat, man. Support the channel, guys. Um, take the five dollar challenge, man. Um, it'd be nice if y'all would support the damn channel. Salute to um Dina, man. She says happy Father's Day. Uh shout out to Eric S. Ock Nation Hall of Famer coming through once again. Salute to my man. Um Barry B, man. Barry B in the building, man. Um, yeah, man. Uh, and salute to salute to Deluxe Two Four Seven, aka Cal Ripken, aka the real MVP, coming through once again. Let's let's see what happened at this um, Aquatica place. Um, 
um on on uh let's see let's look at um what's it called uh twitter man uh see what happened uh -oh. at this place there's uh -oh. a lot of events man um getting turned violent man it's just what's going on man um i don't get it man i'm confused man let's something see. in the melanin perhaps yeah. we can divine something from this well it is right yo handful of white people One little cop in there, one lonely cop. They're not stopping fighting. Black people are the only people that don't stop when the cops show up. Like that's what got that girl killed that one time. What's her name? Um Micaiah or whatever. Micaiah. Yeah, Micaiah Bryant. Micaiah Bryant. That was, he, he's hey, to think that was the best example of marksmanship I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, that was, a that was the one shot. that got LeBron to come out and say, they killing us. You he couldn't even it. do that twice if he tried in a training no, exercise. That was a very well good shot. That was a good shot. Yikes. Yo, I, I, I'm waiting for them to blame the, the water park for this. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, they, they, was, um, they. The way they set up the wave pool, it was just bound to happen. When I visited water parks as a young child, I, I always thought it peculiar that the, some people there wore shirts, shorts, socks, sand. Like they had, they were fully clothed at all times. Life vest. Uh, yeah, that too. <laughs> now that I think about it, fucking three feet deep, we got life vest and floaties on. Maybe, maybe it's with yeah, a pistol, but... Jerry. Think, huh? Maybe it's to conceal a pistol, bro. Think about it, dog. <laughs> Hey, y'all think Caitlin Clark is stressing y'all? Yeah, I think she's starting to. Uh, well, uh, she's got uh, all the weight of uh, white America on her back, so I hope so. She, she yeah, has the weight of black America on her back. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> well, that's going to be on her neck. This is sad, man. Yeah, well, it's embarrassing, man, to watch them do this shit, man. It is. It's embarrassing as shit. And they just won't stop either. It's not it's like so it, funny like, how they flamed out the W WNBA so fast. Yeah, it didn't take them long. It's like they didn't even <laughs> let they 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 didn't even let this shit get started, man. They were just like they tanked it from the beginning, man. God, I think she's gonna leave, man. That'd be. I hope she does because that whole nah. fucking organization would flop overnight. Leaves to Russia. No, go to Ice Cube. <laughs> These are they're, they're ruiners of things, man. Some people are ruiners of things, man. Let's that's what we do, man. <laughs> it's fucking fact. We are a bunch of fucking ruiners, man. There are so many events over here that they don't have anymore because of niggas. It's ridiculous. Mm. <laughs> Yo, I, I was there a mass shooting in Texas for June tenth. I think I heard something like that. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Um, that would be crazy. The, the origins of uh, Juneteenth. Yeah. yeah, man, that would be. That would just be sad, man. Come on, guys, don't don't do that, man. Um, let me see something, man. Let me let me change this title right quick. I I didn't even really know today was. Let me uh, let me change this um, because I didn't hey. even really know it was it was uh, June. June yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I'm gonna I'm put the link in the bag. I didn't even know today was Saturday, man. Like my days, we were sick, so my days just was running together, man. I didn't know what was going on. Y'all put it in the bag chat. I ain't gonna show you. Okay. June T. A celebration of freedom, culture, and legacy. It's more than just that. Our people are supposed to be free. That's the power of it. Remembering <laughs> the pain in the past. The slaves were traded. The families were... This is literally like one of the only places that you're free. Like, the Western civilization is like one of the only places you're supposed yeah, like to be. Yeah, like a reenactment in the... 
white <clears throat> soldiers come up and say, uh, what the fuck are you guys doing? You're free. You've been free for a year. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah, oh, man. Shit. Damn. <laughs> Ripped apart. While honoring our rich history and respecting the culture. And it was meant to represent freedom, liberation, and pride. It's the bloodshed that our ancestors that were enslaved. And that is a symbol of resilience, pride. A growing movement for empowerment and education in New York City and across the country. The CBS News New York Juneteenth celebration starts right now. The parade is just wrapping up here at Linden Park. Voices loud and proud to kick off the party at this celebration of history and culture. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to CBS News New York. It's Juneteenth celebration. I'm Alicia Reed here at Gershwin Park in East New York, Brooklyn, where the 15th annual Juneteenth Festival and Celebration is underway. CBS2 is a proud community partner of the nonprofit CBS all right let's see uh what else is going on man uh okay here you go juneteenth is wednesday june 19th the national holiday marks the day in 1865 when federal i told you it's june 19th but this is the weekend okay they're celebrating this weekend but yes yeah, june 19th man Groups told slaves in Galveston, Texas, they were freed. And the nonprofit Juneteenth NYC is celebrating with a weekend of festivities. Joining me now to talk more about it is the founder and executive director of Juneteenth NYC, Athenia Rodney. My God, Welcome. Is here. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. First, let's talk about the importance of Juneteenth. <laughs> yes. Um, so Juneteenth overall is important to celebrate, right? A lot of people really don't know or understand the full um, breath of what Juneteenth meant. And they're like, oh, it's just something that we mm -hmm. that, that Texas celebrated. But it's more than just that. Um, it's um, highlighting all of the things that have happened. I don't know that. anything about um, Juneteenth. Maybe. To think that there were troopers who went yeah. down to Galveston, Texas. They actually weren't supposed to be going there. They were supposed to be going to Mexico to fight mm -hmm. in their civil war. And because of the weather, they were rerouted um, to Texas. Hey, sister, fix your... <laughs> <laughs> Shit, blinding the shit out of the whole crowd. Imagine a couple of thousand <laughs> black people landing in Galveston, Texas with guns and seeing that their this situation is happening wow. and people are still enslaved. And they were also the same troopers that were in Virginia who helped to. Uh, she, she ain't gonna fix that damn earring, nah. man. Fuck that shit. Man. Now, let's see what's going on here in Youngstown, man. The Youngstown's largest cultural celebration makes a return starting this weekend. It's the Juneteenth celebration that is kicking off today and continues all throughout the week leading up to June Juneteenth with special events, including a show food cook-off. So here to tell us a little bit more about it, we have Joseph Napier. Did I say it right? Okay. <laughs> Jessica Aiken and Ralph Stoddard with Stoddard. me. Joining me. Stoddard! <laughs> <laughs> joining me this morning. Good morning, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. First of all, we want to talk to our viewers about, you know, Juneteenth and what it is for us, what it means and why we celebrate it. So can somebody? Absolutely. So in regards to just the history of Juneteenth, uh, it's definitely its origins in uh, Galveston, Texas in 1865. Uh, the Union Army went there and um, enforced the Emancipation Proclamation, which set over 250,000 uh, enslaved Africans free. So we just want to commemorate that um, and bring it forward. Uh, it being a national holiday now is very important that, you know, the entire country uh, wraps its arms around this holiday. Wow, absolutely. And then tonight, of course, we have the Sankofa Ball, that mm -hmm. annual event uh, that one of my colleagues, Leslie Huff, is going to be the uh, master of ceremonies for tonight. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about that event and, mm -hmm. you know, all the other events that are leading up to Juneteenth. Yeah, um, Santa Kofa is about reaching back and paying it for it. So uh, our honorees tonight uh, do an exemplary. Yo, man, God damn, man. Y'all make, making me not even want to go to Juneteenth. Juneteenth sound boring and shit, man. <laughs> Fuck, yo, man. Yo, uh, Juneteenth, a.k.a. George Floyd Remembrance Day. Yeah, when is it going to get lit, man? I need and to anyway, see it's not the end of slavery movie. because the end of slavery was... Uh, in 1866, when the final Cherokee, Tree, Cheek, and Chickasaw tribes were forced to sign new treaties that required them to flee their, free their black slaves. 
Hey, y'all want to hear something crazy? Know. We have an event over here in Philly where nothing ever happens, and it's been it's been going on since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. An African event yeah. is called a Dune Day. Mm. What is it? It's yes, like sir. The, this, this is where you're going to see all the dashikis and the dreads. Mm. Yeah. And get some oh, good God, We're like the center for that. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh conscious people in Philly. A lot. So why yeah. is it not why doesn't it get violent? What do you think that is? Oh, uh, for some reason, like everybody chills on that day. I don't know what it is. It's almost like we respect that shit. We need to study that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's never it's never it's never been a problem in all these years. It's never been a problem. Nah, man, Ooh. not once. Not once. Wow. This way you'll see Sarnetta and all his camp. <laughs> mm. Tens of thousands are out right now celebrating Juneteenth in the historic Five Points neighborhood of Denver. Yeah. Juneteenth marks the day when enslaved people in Texas learned they were free two years after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. So the festivities kicked off with one of the city's oldest parades. Denver 7's Adria Irahita shows us the sights and sounds of Denver's Juneteenth. This is our thing. We're here to celebrate. The spirit of Juneteenth. We're here to celebrate freedom. This is Alicia Smith Young's second time marching in Denver's Juneteenth parade. Or should I say jumping and skipping with the 40 plus double Dutch club. Freedom to play, freedom to. How did these Negroes come up with this shit? Because two years ago, there wasn't none of this shit. And now all of a sudden, they got all these traditions. Like, where are these it's like they, they act like they've been doing this shit for like my daddy whole changed the world. <laughs> I mean, I think it's important to remember George Floyd. I that he's the reason the Floydian Reformation, yeah. That he I mean, let's be honest, he's the reason why this occurred. No, I hate that motherfucker because he made us change our fucking name, the Redskins, man. But the man George, but, George Floyd? Oh yeah, yeah, damn. The man. And Uncle Ben's rice, man. I've been all day looking around the grocery store for Uncle Ben's rice. They turned the lights yeah, off. I was like, where the fuck is Uncle Ben's at, man? What about Aunt Jemima? Aunt Jemima's still around? I think she's nah, nah, it's man. the Pearl River oh, Baking oh, Company now. Oh, they, oh, no. They got Lando Lakes, too, man, didn't they? Yep. These yeah, motherfuckers going to be asking for a black iceberg soon. I'm telling you, man. Ain't shit, man. Salute to um Margaret, man. Shout out to Margaret, man. Margaret, thanks for the content. Thanks for the content. Salute to you, Margaret. Um, these Negro crazy, man. To be Americans and have the freedom to live your life. It's one of the oldest parades in Denver. It's full of history, knowledge, dating back to the 1950s. And the community is out here supporting each other. That's a beautiful thing. It symbolically retraces the journey of the last emancipated slaves. Marching in it, seeing all the, the community on the sidelines, that's not even being true. able to represent and yeah, support, everyone being together, it. happy, you know, peacefully, so it's Some a beautiful Union troops thing. came to the fucking notice on the church. With drums, marching, and dancing. I think it's great. I hear you over the drums, man. <laughs> what I mean, so Juneteenth, like, some Union soldiers rode into town, they're like, oh, fuck. Uh, these sons are still enslaved, so they put a notice on the church, and and that was that. There's no fucking march or anything. Yeah, I hear twerking on Juneteenth. Well, not only that, then I mean they don't even talk about the Native Americans keeping their slaves like um into the 20th century. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It wasn't 1866. They kept their slaves. That's just when the treaties requiring to them to do that went into effect. Uh-huh. I'm not saying that they actually did. Okay. But that would mark the formal Great end of slavery in America. Ooh. Gotten bigger. Um, I used to do security for working at Juneteenth for five years ago, and it's grown so much. It's a celebration of triumph. Right now, I think in this world, we need that. We need community, and we need to show each other. At the end of the day, we all have red blood <laughs> in our bodies and our hearts. Right? It doesn't matter about the color of skin on the outside. It matters about what connects us and not what separates us. In Denver, Adria Erahita. Denver, yikes. 
day as a national holiday. Some of you might have tomorrow off for this day, which recognizes June 19th, 1865, when African Americans in Texas learned of their freedom two years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Denver has a big celebration in Five Points, and Spencer Wilson takes us there. It's a hot Colorado day, but it's not stopping people from coming out to Five Points, once nicknamed the Harlem of the West. It's the first year Denver Film has been a part of the Juneteenth Festival, showcasing their movie Summer of Soul. But yeah, we just we just want to reach out to to a broader community and uh, let people know that we exist and we have uh, counter programming for pretty much. Pretty what part of Juneteenth is this? <laughs> yeah, I'm perplexed. <laughs> Like this is the fuck is this, man? This is like <laughs> they're, they're still in this too, huh? What the yeah. hell is this shit? This is yeah, that technology. Damn. Oh, sorry, man. For pretty much pretty much anybody. And it's Alicia's first time out too. Painting history. On the painting it'll say Harlem of the West. That was what this area was coined and phrased with. So yeah, and I have a generational kind of three portrait thing going there trying to show the different generations and how we're continuing to build the community up. Luciana says now that Juneteenth is a national holiday, she sees progress being made for African Americans in Colorado, but there's more work to do. Of course we have a lot more. So just now, since this holiday was made, she saw progress in Colorado from black people. Well, before then, you know, basically Jim Crow. <laughs> yeah, you know, Colorado, basically just like Dixie. Delhi, There's man. never not going to be work to do because it's just a power struggle. Yeah, we're always like... going to have a long way to go in this country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just it's just yeah. a means of like we're justified and demanding more stuff. You vote in like unlimited yearly reparations, it wouldn't fucking matter. Can, can you imagine what that road that path looks like? Like the end <laughs> of that has to be a fucked up place. It's hell on they, earth. Black people, black people say, all right, man, white people, we finally even, man. We give you a break. We give up. Somebody yeah. will kill a, some cop will shoot some nigga and you'll start over. Back yeah, the the back Juice back. crew would admit they did 9-11 before sons would ever be like, yeah, I think we're good. We'll, we'll be even when we're all living in my hoods. Wow. And if it were us in chains, there would never have been no fucking Juneteenth. Yo, I don't think niggas getting shot by police is going to work anymore, man. That's still been happening a lot. Yeah, but it's not gives the a right fuck. case. <laughs> I think the right case, though, like, it got to be, it got to be the right case. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the one airman, the airman who got shot by the cop, he was like an upstanding citizen and shit. So sons don't care. It gotta be like a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> a George Floyd. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, like it's a goddamn degenerate fucking son, man. It's gotta be an Ardberry type of nigga. No, that speaks yeah. to Sun's character more. That archetype. Yeah. It's a loud, degenerate. Someone that you could that needs help and you could have helped and you know that you could work on and you know, yeah, yeah some, some. We, we just, we, yeah, we're very. We, we see ourselves in the strangest things, man. For work to do, um, but it is a move in the right direction. Of course, being nationally recognized is something that is huge, and definitely pays homage to the African American history that she we have. Nice. That is built America, basically. Yeah. To that end, there's plenty of political activists walking the asphalt, hoping to get people motivated to make real change in Denver and across the state. I've signed, I don't even know how many things. Um, I find myself putting my name down for anything positive, low-income housing to opportunities for artists, to opportunities for entrepreneurs. How is low-income housing positive, baby? I mean, but what up? A day of remembrance for how far we've come but a reminder that there's always more we can do to create an equal, fair, and free country for all. In Denver, Spencer Wilson, covering Colorado first. Now at five, Milwaukee has one of the oldest and largest Juneteenth celebrations in the entire country. Oh, Hello, really? I'm Katie Clover. Thanks for joining us today. Old. Organizers expect about 60,000 people to show up throughout the day for the big celebration. Ooh, wow. Veronica Macias joins us live from MLK Drive with more. Veronica. Oh, shit. 
Katie, good afternoon. Juneteenth marks a historic day in the African-American community. It's when the last group of slaves were freed in Texas in 1865, and it's an occasion that's still celebrated today with festivals like this one all over the country. It's the 45th annual Juneteenth Festival. We celebrate what the, heck is going on? the last slaves found out they were free. To celebrate that freedom, the African American community comes together to show their unity and embrace their heritage and culture. These dancers with the Nefetari Dance Company performed in the festival's morning parade, showing off their moves rooted in African dance tradition, which their instructor says is not taught in schools. To keep the culture African and so party. that the young people, we keep passing it on and on so that we don't lose it. The block party also includes lots of modern dancing and local food vendors. This street is also filled with tents set up by community outreach groups here to take the opportunity to address issues impacting the African-American community. 85 percent of all people in prison, men and women, come from fatherless homes. Coincidentally, this annual event landed on Father's Day. Leaders of my father's house in Milwaukee say fatherless homes were at the root of many epidemics facing black men. Too many of our children live in homes where there is no man or no father or no mentoring. And that is the result of what we get out here now with all of the crime. The fathers out here showing they care to change the challenges facing their city. Now this event was organized. Challenges facing their city. See that that hurts like that. That's where the woke part fractures and falls apart because like that position that the, the father matters is uh feminist you know like anti-feminist i just looked yeah. it up juneteenth was violent as shit last year <laughs> yeah well we did we covered, I, I would have covered i just didn't know today was juneteenth i don't think there was any violence this year it hasn't happened don't yet don't do that yeah don't do that this party and tonight, thousands of Western New Yorkers are celebrating African-American heritage at the annual Juneteenth Parade and Festival. The parade Dang. stepped off this morning on Genesee Street, and the festivities are continuing at MLK Park. I'm Dave McKinley. Claudine is off this weekend. Two on your sides, Danielle Church heard from parade goers this morning. She joins us live now with more on the celebration. Danielle? Yeah, Dave, so it's been 48 years of Juneteenth celebrations here in Buffalo, one of the first U.S. cities to create a festival for it. Of course, it's now a national holiday as well. But take a look at this. This is from Channel 2's archive, the first Juneteenth ever in 1976. That's when it was still on Jefferson Avenue before the festival grew so big it outgrew the route. And here it was today, still drawing tons of people and bringing the community together to celebrate an important date in history all these years later. It's just in a different location, beginning at Moselle and Genesee and ending at MLK Junior Park for the festival. Some familiar faces from Channel 2 were also in the parade this morning. Here's what some of the parade goers had to say about this year's festivities. We don't elevate it to a new level. We are, um, for the children, we're teaching them something about our history. And I just thank God that this day is a beautiful day and we are out here having a good time. Yes, we are still going through things, but we do see progression. We do see things moving forward. And I just pray that everyone can just get closer, come together and make this. <laughs> what does he talk about, man? Um, he doesn't know. Yeah. He's talking about nothing. I'm telling you, man. Um, hey, none of none of those people that gravitate towards these stuff, they they don't have any substance. Yeah, but they're the most emotional, and they would offend it, you know, harder than you would ever imagine. Mm. Let's see what else is going on. Um. Look in the back chat, I, the video I sent you for the Juneteenth in Texas, they got lit up, mass shooting. Wow. <clears throat> um, let me see something. Uh, 
Yeah, we um I gotta see if I can show that. That's um <laughs> that's some kind of heavy, heavy shit that you so yeah, let's see, man. Um Damn, I thought Juneteenth was doing good this year. Nah, it wasn't. So this is this is this is where? Uh Round Rock. Man, shit. Damn, that's a lot of law. Shit. I'm expensive demographics and shit. That's a lot of tax dollars being spent right yeah, there. Yeah, that's well, that's probably the round rock millions. fucking ended with gunfire. Okay. Wow. Here's the perp, I think, right? Suspect. Suspect. That looks like it might be a white guy, man. Nah, so huh? they're in a bright light. Oh no, nah, that is the sun, man. Yeah, I seen I seen the I seen the forehead, four C yes, head. <laughs> Somebody said he looked like he do look like an alien and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. There's nothing you can do about this stuff. Golly, man. It's just damn on and on and on and on. Shit, um, crazy as a motherfucker. <laughs> we got nuts, man. Give me a city, man. Give me a city, man. Oh, you and man. Keith would be safe, safer if we brought the military in, just like that, what happened in Texas. <laughs> we do a full yeah, blown <laughs> Yeah, man. Maybe i uh, bring the Confederates yeah. back in. Check on yeah. Oakland, yo. Oakland been quiet. They was wilding for Oakland. a minute, then they cooled out. Oakland ain't been quiet, man. I, I think they still attacking the, the Tigers. The Sun, man? There's, there's a Tiger getting beat up right now as we speak at Bad by the Sun, man. Did you see the actual <laughs> Justice Warriors thing on Oakland? He just yeah. did. Y'all see the Tank Davis knock out? What do you say? Yeah, I caught that. He knocked his ass out cold. What what do you say about Oakland? Uh, uh, as a construction crew walked off the job because they kept getting harassed Same. by yeah. some men. That's all that. Is it was it on Brito uh, workers or type? I don't know. God, it's always on Brito workers. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you gotta be on Brito workers. It's popping yeah. in Frisco. You got a guard shot. <laughs> I think we but did. They just suggested it. Oh. They they just left the street, you know, like unfinished. So it's. You know, it looks third worldish. Man, fish! It is dangerous working around these men. It's dangerous. It's fun. They're gonna kill you while in the process of robbing you. Just be honest. Yeah. Down here, they were trying to demolish a bunch of Section Eight housing, and the crew walked off the job because there was bullets flying at random hours of the day. And then they interviewed some of the sons living in the housing. And they were like, I, I be thinking it not being folks from around here. <laughs> it be people yo. coming in here. You heard? In New Orleans a month ago on a, a ring camera, they had a group of Ombrito contractors working on some shit, and some just came up and robbed them of their tools. Yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, I don't that sound like like a, a war zone, a battlefield where like the troops are trying to build, you know, build the station under fire? By the enemies, so it's just like that. Wow, <laughs> all right, they do need to do that. They need to build the pillbox first before they start constructing the home, right? Put a machine gun in. Right. All right, we're <laughs> in the uh, sun area, time to build the pillbox first. Right. Get the flamethrower out, right? Maybe have air support with the, with the minigun. Wow, yeah, okay. there's some, some drones monitoring the area. Police are investigating. We got three teens shot in Milwaukee. Milwaukee police are investigating a fatal shooting on Milwaukee's south side. We know one person is dead, two others are injured. They've been at that scene near 9th in Manitoba for more than an hour now. Our Durante Matthews joins us live there too. Durante, what else have we learned? 
Yeah, Sam, the information is still coming in at the moment, but police have confirmed to me that there were at least three teens shot and one of them has died. Now I'm going to step out of wow. the way so you can get a look at this very active crime scene right now. You can see police still have this street of uh, Manitoba blocked off with crime scene tape as well as their vehicles stationed on each corner. So now I was able to talk to family members of one of the teens that were shot. I'm told that they were out here celebrating a 16-year-old boy's birthday. At one point, he and two others were walking and the witnesses say there were at least two shooters who opened gunfire. Now, all three of those teens were hit and again, one of them has died. Uh, two others, as far as we know right now, are still um, in the hospital at the moment. But again, this is still a lot of fluctuating information coming in right now. Police have been at this scene, as you mentioned, for more than an hour now, just canvassing the area, <laughs> trying to knock on doors, just talking to people, piecing together what happened, and we've been doing the same. But again, once we have more information, we will let you know both online and on air. Reporting live in Milwaukee, Durante Matthews, Fox 6 News. Such a heartbreaking end to a joyous occasion. Durante, thank you. We have more breaking. Such a heartbreaking end to a joyous occasion. Hell no, the sons ain't joyous about that shit. It's just another reason to get together. White people think some people is beaming up with pride about man, it's just another brothers, get sisters. Together. Can we all just appreciate that we are free and like uh, it's not like that? Yeah, man. We just you know. Thank you, white people, though, for giving us that date, man. Thank you, man. Um, it, it bought you a lot of goodwill, <laughs> even though it doesn't seem like it. Mm. Um, Yo, don't don't thank them. I thank George Floyd. Yeah, man. The goodwill that you know you got from giving us a holiday, it'll manifest itself at some point. Fort Worth police say dash camera footage inside a rideshare driver's vehicle showed his murder. The man accused of the murder has a long rap sheet. Fox 4's Peyton Yeager live in Fort Worth with the story. Peyton. Heather, and in an arrest affidavit that we obtained today, it mentions a woman who was driving by and witnessed this murder. I spoke with her on the phone today. She tells me she pulled over and held the victim who had been shot multiple times until first responders arrived. In fact, her description helped detectives capture the suspect. Thursday, flowers next to a mangled fence okay, marked so the spot snitched. where Lyft driver Shawali Sherali was killed. She snitched. It might not be a son, man. A lady snitched, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, 35-year-old Michael Walker sits in the Tarrant County Damn. Jail oh, facing shit. a capital murder charge. That looks charge. like a son, man, to me. Well, police say dash camera yeah, video that's my fault, Walker. man. You always bet on black. <laughs> Look at them nostrils, man. Like the abyss. <laughs> Glossy-eyed. <laughs> Three-year-old yeah. sun girl haircut. <laughs> sun girl haircut. I mean, it's just missing yeah. the little like plastic beads you put. Yeah, in. I was gonna say it's missing the colored Bo beads. Rats. Yeah, bull rats and shit. Yeah. And you it's ain't supposed to judge a book by its cover. And yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, man, a hell of a couple on this book, man. Yeah, but we can we can all read that book just by looking at it. <laughs> I'm, telling you, man. I'm telling you, man. Fuck. Uber drivers Opening been catching fire hell. Shirley in the middle of the day Probably, and stealing bro. his vehicle, according to an arrest warrant affidavit Fox Four obtained on Thursday. Lyft records reveal Shirley picked up a passenger off Knox Street in Fort Worth. May 17th, around 11.20 a.m. 15 minutes later, officers responded to an apartment complex near Sandy Lane and Brentwood Stair Road. A woman passing by told police a silver Camry crashed into a fence. Then she saw a tall man, later identified as Walker, pull an injured person out of the driver's seat and get into the vehicle. Investigators found the Camry abandoned in the back of the apartment parking lot. In the dash camera video, detectives saw a man with distinct underwear and a hairstyle. <laughs> and side buns what the pull fuck? Wait a minute. What? I think that that's the first time sagging. I've heard that. I don't know if I've ever Is heard he that. Before. Sagging like he had polo on or something. Oh, oh yeah, you yeah, may have been sagging. sagging. He had the Scooby Doo underwear on. <laughs> <laughs> Took a shit in the car. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he took a shit on himself, and that was distinct. Like, we're looking for a guy with a big shit stain running around. Oh, my uh, God. You're distinguished. You're distinguished. Oh, let's see. Abandoned in the back of the apartment parking lot. In the dash camera video, detectives saw a man with distinct underwear and a hairstyle with side buns pull out a pistol in the back seat and shoot Sherrilee multiple times from behind. Ooh. Police say the same man then ditched the vehicle before saying, quote, I had to put a little air in it, bro. Go get the body. On May 18th, wow. an officer spotted Walker urinating and holding a beer bottle Damn. in Fort Worth and arrested him. Checks Walker out. Walker has been in and out of jail for the last decade, both in Harris County and Tarrant County, for charges including assault of a peace officer, assault of a family member, and drug possession. People like that, they should just stay behind bars forever. They don't deserve to go outside and kill another innocent person thursday we spoke to Lee's older brother in charge, Ray, that'd be true. following the new details about the arrest the two brothers and their families moved to north texas from afghanistan in 2021 oh, to escape the taliban when you're coming from a country like afghanistan and thinking that you're going to go to america you'll Even be safe in a there. safer country where you're going to have a good future that is some fucked up sad shit. You escape from fucking Afghanistan. You like hang on to the fucking landing gear or some goddamn plane that came back to America <laughs> only to be fucking killed yeah. by uh, the literal definition of pookie. Damn. Shit. Well, here's the thing. It's kind of revenge because in their countries, this guy is you know, pretty much a slave or regulated to a slave class. So. They've done away with anybody that looks like this in those. Uh, there they ain't no yeah. room for slavery are you, there. For are this. you saying there's no Juneteenth type celebration in Afghanistan? No, not anywhere in the Arab countries, man. Oh, man I was wondering nothing. what it looked like in Kabul. Mm. Uh, Maybe they, you know, probably too busy with pride. Yeah, that's what I think it is. Um, these, this is insane, man. Uh, wow. We need a we need like a Juneteenth Pride fusion parade. They should oh, really God. just combine the holidays. <laughs> that would be such a good troll. Holy fuck, that would be funny. Well, our Dune Day celebration and Pride Day is on the same day in Philly. Wow. Real sad. Yeah, man. Yeah, despicable. Well, the uh, black people uh, are on the pride pride flag, so you know. Yo, somebody was on fire in that last story. What the hell was that? <laughs> oh, is that shit. a human being, yo? Oh, he tased him near a gas pump. United deputy is now facing charges after this arrest. It shows him tase the man. Damn! Better not be the sun man, goddamn. Deputy on fire. Fox 35's Rory Edinger shows us how this case could cost taxpayers millions of dollars. I talked with a lawyer for the man burned at this Wawa over a year ago. He says the state attorney's office was considering a felony charge of attempted manslaughter for that deputy. But he says attempted manslaughter is hard to prove. Manslaughter inherently means it was an accident. So it's difficult to say that you attempted an accident. He explained that's how the deputy wound up instead with just a misdemeanor charge. Oh, this is the moment that led to an Osceola County Sheriff's deputy facing criminal charges. <laughs> Deputies were after Gian Barreto Baerga for driving recklessly, running red lights, going on sidewalks and grass, even driving toward oncoming traffic. They followed him to a gas station. They pull out a taser and they the acknowledge the risk. Hey, kill the pot, kill the pot, yes. But Deputy David Crawford fired the taser anyway. We're gonna get you the hospital. Burn injuries make people very yeah. sensitive to the sun and susceptible to infection. The only parts of Barreto's body that weren't burned were his face because he was wearing a mask, his hands because he had gloves, and his feet because he had shoes. The rest is covered in second and third degree burns that have racked up seven million dollars in medical expenses. Wow! Are coming after the sheriff's office for that money. 
and cause the taxpayers of Osceola County millions. God. There should be consequences because how else do we stop this type of activity from happening again? The consequences for the deputy who lit that fire? A criminal charge of culpable negligence, a misdemeanor Dang. punishable by up to a year in jail. I need water, I need something, I need water, sir. Beretto's attorneys say the crime doesn't fit the punishment, but that the punishment is all the law allows for. I think that the He's still gasoline on himself? Is that how this happened? Um, cognizant of this and make oh, no. changes. So if that was a sun man, it would have been marches. Oh my man. God, yeah. it would have been apocalyptic. It was just the fumes, I'm sure. From they the burning gas. us alive. Oh. That gas station yeah. would be a plume of smoke right now. Yeah, clean. Yeah, it the gas station down. The clean cop done burnt something. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shit. We got something else, man. We keep it funky, man. God, dog, we keep it lit. Um. Ah, if you want to see the definition of a son, man, you got to go check out some of the testimony in the uh, Young Thug trial. Man, yeah. you want to see level 10 ignorance? Lord, <laughs> level 10, dog. <laughs> Crazy shit. Yeah, I, that, that trial's been going on so long, I kind of like lost interest in it because it's like, mm -hmm. yo, when is it going to come? Well, like, when is this it's the verdict? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what oh, the yeah, fuck? Man. Homie, homie is having a rough day. That's 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 Mystic Philly, man. Come on, Mystic Philly, man. God damn it! God damn you! Um, okay, let's see. Uh. God damn, Albuquerque police say a man who shoplifted from an Albertsons and pointed a gun at an employee has now turned himself in. After police video was released showing what happened outside that grocery store earlier this week. News 13's Jessica Barone explains why the suspect says he gave himself up. Now, Oh, this shit. is a moment a man and woman can be seen walking through an Albertsons parking lot after police say they shoplifted from the store back in December. A store hey. employee starts following them, capturing the moment the man Sorry, pulls out a gun and points it at him. The incident happened at the grocery store on course near Alameda. The man in the video has now been identified as 19-year-old Silic O'Neill. According to police, O'Neill oh, called Neil. police early Saturday morning saying he wanted to turn himself in after seeing himself on the news. <laughs> O'Neill told police he was trying to impress the woman he was with by, quote, getting her what she wanted from inside the store. He added he didn't know her very well and had only met her the night before. Store employees said the suspects grabbed multiple bottles of alcohol and a floral arrangement before walking out of the store pointing the gun, and then firing it seven times in the air. O'Neill told police his friends and family also recognized him on the news, but told him not to turn himself in. He admitted to pointing the gun at the employee, but said it was empty at the time and that his finger was not on the trigger. He added he was not a killer and didn't want to hurt anyone. When police asked about the gun, O'Neill said it was stolen from him while he was downtown. Jessica Barron, Karakui News, 13. Yeah, he got a little oh. bit of sun in him, man. There's a, a sun man somewhere in that family. Apparently, the, the glider within him uh, wrestled control, though. Yeah, he shot in the air, yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, um, salute to Doug Chunks. Oct Nation Hall of Famer, uh, Rushmore, he says, Heaven found, heaven forbid any son mentions that some states abolished slavery as early as the late 1700s. Facts. Happy Father's Day, Nation. I didn't know that. I didn't know that some states abolished slavery, unless they were in the North, right? The Northern states, right? Yeah, yeah, the Northern Oh, yeah, states. for sure. Yeah, man. The last uh, three states to abolish slavery. We're in northern states. Yeah, and, and before yeah. the Civil War, 
Yeah, and before the Civil War even started, they, the whole country uh, banned imports of slaves, I think. Yeah, well, Somewhere the slave there. trade had, you know, Britain yeah. basically said the slave trade was over in 1810. Yeah. And ever since then, they, you know, interdicted anybody who even attempted to do it. Hmm. Wow. That's deep, man. Um, man, I am so fucking tired right now, man. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all, man. I am exhausted, man. Um, we're gonna try to do, we're gonna do something tomorrow, man. I'm so fucking tired right now, man. I'm, 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 I'm falling asleep, man. Salute to all you guys, man. Um, we'll be back tomorrow, man. Um, salute, salute. Hey. Go ahead. Same black top. Same black channel. Same black channel. Out of here. Peace out. We out. Peace.